Humans have been fascinated with the sky and all it contains since the very beginning, and the sun, moon, and stars all capture our imaginations. There's so much out there, and in this video we're going to explore some of the astronomical phenomena visible from Earth. Although different systems were created in different cultures around the world, including Western, Polynesian, Egyptian, and Chinese, the International Astronomical Union, or the IAU, currently recognizes 88 constellations in the sky, 48 of which were from the Greek Ptolemy's Almgest. His constellations were based on those of the ancient Mesopotamians. The 12 zodiac constellations, or 13 as if I just partially counts? are the constellations that lie on the ecliptic, or the sun's path in the sky, and are used in astrology to determine what zodiac sign you are based on what day of the year you were born in. In addition to the 13 zodiac constellations, there are an additional 29 between the ecliptic and the north celestial pole, and 47 between the ecliptic and the south celestial pole. When celestial bodies are perfectly aligned, amazing things happen. Conjunctions occur when two or more bodies lie in the same vertical plane with the Earth. Conjunctions can be either superior or inferior. Superior conjunctions happening when the Sun is sandwiched between the Earth and a planet, while inferior conjunctions happen when the Earth and the Sun sandwich a planet. When the Earth is sandwiched between a planet and the Sun, the planet is said to be at opposition and is the biggest and brightest it can get. In fact, an opposition of the moon results in a full moon and an inferior conjunction creates a new moon. And an even cooler thing happens when the three bodies lie in the same vertical and horizontal plane or line. When three or more bodies lie on a line like this, it's called a syzygy. Planetary alignments, transits of planets across the sun, occultations of planets across each other, optical multiples when several bodies are seen as one, and solar and lunar eclipses of the moon are some examples of the magic that happens during syzygies. They're even believed to cause moonquakes, but nothing has been completely proven in that area yet. Plus, when all eight planets lie on one side of the sun, even if not on a line, it's called a grand syzygy, which is extremely rare, the next one scheduled for 2161, where all the planets will be within 69 degrees of each other. Derived from the Greek word for abandonment or downfall, eclipses are a special type of syzygy in which a celestial body is either obscured in another's shadow or blocked from view by something passing in front of it. The most common way we refer to them are in the Earth-Sun-Moon system, essentially perfect new and full moons. The type of eclipse in this system is dependent on the positions of the Earth and Moon relative to the Sun, and the only reason they don't happen every month is because the Moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted about 5.145 degrees away from Earth's own orbit around the Sun. And contrary to popular belief, not all eclipses are the same. A total eclipse occurs when either the Moon or Sun lies in the total or umbral shadow of the other, while a partial eclipse occurs when the Moon or Earth lies in the partial or penumbral shadow of the other. Finally, an annular eclipse occurs when the Earth lies in the antumbral shadow of the Moon, meaning the Moon is positioned exactly in front of the Sun, but is too far away from the Earth and appears smaller than the Sun, leaving a ring of the Sun outside of the Moon exposed. An annular lunar eclipse is impossible because the Earth is simply too big relative to the Moon for it to happen. In addition, there are four phases of a solar eclipse. First contact, in which the moon first starts to cover the sun. Second contact, or where the moon entirely covers the sun. Usually this phase lasts a few minutes. Third contact, in which the moon begins to leave the sun. And fourth contact, or where the moon leaves the sun entirely. Finally, eclipse cycles, or when a series of eclipses are separated with a certain amount of time, can also occur. The Soros is the cycle of a lunar or solar eclipse, which lasts about 18 years? Also known as shooting stars, meteor showers occur when meteoroids are space debris ranging from the size of under that of a grain of sand or a large boulder or small asteroid fly through Earth's atmosphere and release light and heat energy due to the friction of the atmosphere. Once they hit the Earth, they become known as meteorites. Even though meteoroids zip towards the Earth parallel to each other, their perspective due to the sphere of the planet makes them appear to radiate from one point known as the radiant. While meteor showers can occur at a couple meteors per hour, intense showers hours or outbursts can range from hundreds to thousands an hour, while extreme outbursts are known as storms. 
The most prominent meteor showers are the Perseids, peaking mid-August in the constellation Perseus, and the Leonids, peaking mid-November in the constellation Leo. Comets, or the bodies of rock and ice from outside the solar system, are made from methane, ammonia, ice, other compounds that develop a haze around it known as the coma. Having extremely elliptical orbits, they also develop a tail when they approach the sun, which always points away from the sun. Long period comets, or comets with an orbital period of over 200 years, are believed to originate from the Oort cloud, while short period comets, or comets with an orbital period of under 200 years, are said to come from the Cooper belt. Latin for the lights. Auroras are phenomena caused by the sun's emission of protons and free electrons brought by the solar wind strike to the Earth. Although largely deflected by the Earth's magnetosphere, some charged particles are able to get through at the north and south poles where the magnetic field is the weakest. The particles then react with gaseous oxygen and nitrogen in the thermosphere and exosphere about 80 to 640 kilometers above the Earth, resulting in bursts of colored light visible from the Arctic and Antarctic regions of the globe. The colors of the aurora borealis in the north and aurora australis in the south depend on the gas reacting with the charged particles, as well as the altitude in which the collisions occur. As you approach the the poles, the auroras become more prominent and frequent. Following is a chart with the colors associated with the different types of gases and altitude ranges in which the protons and electrons react with nitrogen and oxygen.